What up, what up? So today I am, I guess I already started a few days ago, but today I'm starting the filming of me finally working on Eddie's car. This is going to be a drag and drive show stopping BA freaking mod motor. It used to be a coyote. The only person I know went from a coyote to a mod motor. But this mod motor that was in this car was a record holding car. It's in a Celine S S550, I think it was, and this is a 197, or maybe I'm backwards. I don't know. Either way, this motor held a record at one point for a 275 class. I don't know if it was like limited 275 or something. I don't know. It went like 450s. I, it was a long time ago. Don't quote me. I really don't know what I'm talking about. I just know what I've been told. Blah blah blah. Anyway, this motor's been really fast. The motor trans converter combo rear end combo all came out of the same car that was eddie's brother's car so now i am finally getting to finish it and i've got as you saw the other day i posted on facebook i got the bing -a ding -a ding the aeromotive aeromotive brushless 7 gpm custom mount with a fill cap and a custom 3d printed screw and funnel that i designed so got that finished up now i just finished making um a material list for the cooling system and both fuel systems next i gotta get a material list for the dry sump system because i want all the fittings to match um, this thing right now it's got some surface rust on it but don't worry it's all getting sanded down painted all that uh but I got to finish cutting the firewall. I don't got to finish. Uh, we started cutting the cow panel out, but I got to finish cutting that off and then start cutting the firewall. I'm going to make a little panel that sits in, a little panel that sits in here that's flat. So that way I can put a bulkhead for this cold side to run in, into the intercooler, out of the intercooler, and then another little bulkhead that runs into the intake plenum. The intake plenum is over here along with the intake lower plenum. Uh, Zach, if you remember Zach Whitaker, Z Witty, he drew this up back when I was in Fort Wayne and we had our buddy Dylan uh, cut it and bend it with his plasma and the flange also. So now I'm getting ready to make a nice little uh, thick, quarter inch thick flange that's going to weld onto here that way it spaces our throttle body out just a smidgen and it will it will space the throttle body out just a smidgen get it to where i can weld on there tap those holes tap the holes for the uh the plenum sorry i don't know if i got dust in my nose or what tap the holes for the plenum and then i'm going to that way the angle of the throttle body is where it's at and then i can mimic that angle with the panel I'm going to put in the firewall. Once I have that done, I can design up little 3D printed, um, I'm gonna print it out of carbon so it can handle the heat, uh, 3D printed bulkhead flange with two HD clamps on it. That way I can do, you know, one side of HD clamps will be carbon fiber, one side of them will be aluminum, that goes in the cold side. And that'll make getting the intake and cold side on and off a lot easier. Um, and it'll make it look really clean. Um, just So right now I'm just kind of ordering, trying to get all the material I can here so that way I can get cracking on this thing. Once I get the cold side and the intake done and the uh, fuel system, all that stuff plumbed, then I can, and that way I know whether I need to make bulkheads, what I'm gonna run through the firewall, what I'm not gonna run through the firewall. Once all that's done, I can all come back out. Everything comes out. The engine bay is gonna get painted. I'm gonna make some, uh, some block off panels for the firewall. That'll all get finished, painted, super nice. The interior can get painted. Uh, I still gotta mount the seats, mount master cylinder, all that stuff. Um, there's a lot of finish work that needs, needs to be done. Chase and Moo Moo, they did the scallops inside and the carbon work and the tin work, uh, what was left to do of it. Um, the tin soldiers did the chassis and the mini tubs, stuff like that. So Moo Moo and Chase did a really good job on that stuff. I just gotta finish welding in the scallops bolt in, finish fitting just a few pieces, bolt all the carbon in, mount the seats, parachute handle. Um, when we were in Fort Wayne, Zach mounted the 20 gallon pump gas fuel cell. 
So I've just got to basically finish plumbing everything, mount the ice box, mount the battery. There's just so much finish work that needs that needs done. You know, uh, there's a lot of time that goes into the chassis work, but most people underestimate how much time goes into the finish work also. Um, I did the turbo kit. I did the front end with the help of Dylan. He bent it. I went to, I took the car to his house one day. I cut the front off of it. He helped me bend it up. I took it back, fit it all up, welded it and uh, finished the turbo kit. So there's been a lot of hands in this build, you know, coming from everything from one car to another car, coming from one shop to my shop. And we've just been working on it on and off for the past couple of years. And now Eddie's finally ready to get it done. You know, he's been ready to get it done, but finally I'm in a position now where I can get it done. Eddie's been super patient with me. One of the best customers you can have. So I'm going to get this thing finished. I'm going to make it as if it was my own car. I want it to be super unique, super awesome. And just a lot of stuff that will make Eddie's life easier. That's why we went with the seven GPM um, brushless pump because he's gonna be running on, I think C16, like race gas. And it had, it's got a dry sump system, so it's got a Outlaw, I think Outlaw 1000, yeah, magna fuel on the back of that. But if you're doing drag and drives, then you got to get down there and you got to take the belt on and off the pump all the time. Well, that is a dry sump system. You can't just take the pump off of it or the belt off of it because then you don't have any oil pumps. So that's not really going to work for the drag and drive stuff. Plus this car, I mean, it's on casters right now, but when it's on the ground, it is on the ground like you can't get under there and jack it up and do all that stuff so especially in the front the back you'd be able to jack up change wheels and tires but the front would be a nightmare having to get under that because you can't hardly get a jack under it so it would be a nightmare having to take that belt on and off or do something crazy with the fuel system so i was like dude let's do two fuel systems i'll run a separate set of injectors and you can run on one fuel system when you're driving and you run on the other fuel system when you're at the track, you never have to switch pumps, belts. All you gotta do is flip a switch and uh, change your tune up. So that's what's gonna happen. The cars, once I get done with all the finish work, the car is going to go to Fuel Tech to get wired and dynoed. And uh, I might even go to a class. He said they're gonna have a training course class. So I'd like to go to that and learn about Fuel Tech. So, excuse me. So that's the gist of it. I know it's a lot to take in, but this is what I'm gonna be working on, hitting hard because this thing's got to get done so Eddie can get back to racing and then I can start working on Uncle Sam and my other projects. So I'm going to be hitting this as hard as I can and in between I'll be hitting other stuff. But for now, we're working on the moose thing. Also, don't judge my work area or my fab area. I'm just, this is temporary as I work, you know. Um, I worked really hard to get that building semi-finished so I can start working out of it because I've got to start getting work done and making money. You know, I'm doing as many parts as I can, but I've also got other stuff that needs to get done and I need somewhere that I can get it done. So I'm just kind of building as I go. This is all somewhat temporary for now, but this is all I have. And I'm gonna keep working on obviously organizing it better. Um, I still need to save up and do this other back wall, but for now, this is what I got. And I'm gonna make the best of it because your limitations, trust me, are not by the tools. Although good tools make a huge difference, your imagination and your work ethic is 98% of it. So this is what I'm doing and that's where I'm doing it. All right, boys, I got the um, the little adapter plate welded on the plenum, the throttle body, I got it drilled, tapped, throttle body's bolted on, 
And now I am cutting, I'm getting, I'm kind of outlining. I used a straight edge from here to here to kind of give me on both sides, you can see, to give me a reference of how wide the plenum is. And then I am going to cut a big square because I got a pipe going under there and then that pipe coming here. I'm gonna cut a big square and then make it flat to match that angle. So way this pipe can come in, go straight through. This one can go straight through, turn this way, turn this way once they're inside the car. So what I'm gonna do probably is cut a big square chunk out and then print my piece that's going to attach to the plenum so I can attach it to the plenum and it'll set it exactly where it's gonna be and then I'll sheet metal in to that piece so that way I have a reference to tell me how deep and what angle to put it at. So that's the plan as of now. So I'm gonna take this intake back off and then start cutting. So I got a big hole cut in Eddie's car and I've got a firewall bulkhead, um, probably 50% design. I've actually already redone it quite a few times because my build plate on my printer is only so big and I don't want to print this in more than one piece. So, um, you know, it might be two pieces front and back, but I don't want up and down to be two pieces that snaps together or anything like that just because I want it to be very, very sturdy. It's gonna be printed out of carbon. It's gonna be solid filled. It's actually gonna be really strong. So here's what I got. I've got this. This is an exact angle that will fit perfectly on the throttle body and put this level, you know, parallel, or not parallel, perpendicular to the ground at a 90 degree angle. So then this will just come out and go to our four inch that's coming in from the turbos. And then this is coming from the intercooler into the throttle body. Also, I've started designing a carb hat for my white Chevelle and another car that I'm actually getting today. So this is the rough version of it. It kind of looks a little round here. I, I would like it to look more slick. But I think if I can get this coming out more, you know, fill it this just a little more it'll look a little better, but it's gonna have bolts around here, a flange, so we can do two different style, a couple different style snouts. Um, and I'm not gonna make it less round because that's basically redoing the whole design. I'm gonna see what this looks like on a car with a V-band on it and see how I like it. Um, but check out what I got. Another marketplace score. I've got a 750 um blow through carburetor it's a pro form um a guy had it on a mopar a 400 cubic inch big block mopar uh i already started printing part of the hat and it messed up in carbon because i was using the wrong nozzle but you can see how this thing's freaking sturdy but this is my new carbonator it's perfect it basically matches the vibe of the car perfectly i mean it's already sun faded on the anodizing it's got red and blue old school it's got the little vent tube thingy to keep it from blowing too much whatever because the air there's holes drilled right here i've watched a few videos on blow throughs basically i know nothing that keeps the air from turbulating and blowing into the vent tubes or whatever um don't listen to a word i say about this because i don't know what i'm talking about but this gonna go on there don't mind how messed up and botched my print is but i got the fitment perfect and then the snap will bolt on here and come down but either way that's for this car robert robert from force performance is sending me two exhaust housings for these 72 75 turbos that i still have left over from mountain dew um, cause I ended up putting 78, 75s on that, but I've got these bad boys here. This one here actually ate a wire. It was on Austin's car and I get, I swapped them out, but either way, um, it could be fixed. 
I was gonna put one of these on the Chevelle and one on a possible another car that I was gonna get, but I didn't end up getting it. So now I think, I think both of these are gonna go on the C10. And then I have a S400 chassis turbo over there that I think I'm going to put on the Chevelle. Just because the C10 will be way cooler with twins, the Chevelle will be way cooler with a big single. And I just think it'll be cooler in general. So that's my plan for that. Uh, the C10 is gonna be awesome. And I'm going to raffle it off or give it away. At, once again, don't know about that. But I have Eddie's firewall, excuse me. I have Eddie's firewall piece here, the bulkhead. And I learned how to do organic supports on Prusa Slicer, my new Prusa Slicer. I have, this one's printed out of plastic. It's for mock-up, it's for me to make everything out of. Then I have a really, really nice one printing out of carbon, but it's gonna take like four days to print. So this one was a lot quicker and it just got done and it looks amazing. So I'm not sure what it's gonna look like or how it's gonna fit, but I just had to get a video of this before I've got it off because it looks so dang good. Dang, look how easy those come off. That's why people use these, because those are nice. All right, so my piece needs a little more clearance. So I got it marked here. Um, there's the center of it. I'm going to drill here with the hole saw. So that way it makes a nice clean cut. And I'm gonna make it bigger than this radius because I've got room to play with because this is flange. So I'm gonna be making sheet metal up to the bottom of this piece anyway. So I'm going to cut it with some room to go so that way this fits perfect in there. And then I'll be able to see what this bad boy looks like in there. And I can start making my templates to go here. And then even, I'll probably print another piece like this that's probably kicked with two 45s this way. So that way this can bolt here like that, except it'll be kicked like that. And then I just have to make tubes from here. Um, this one's gonna go from here and then from down here down to there where I still got to weld a tube and a v-band on that'll come up it'll probably come under this one I know there's not much room in there but where there's a wheel there's a way naturally I mean I might even make this one come right into here and then this one um, come up and over down to that one that's probably gonna be my best bet so I'm gonna keep on keeping on So now that I got my hole cut there, or a lot closer, I just have to widen at the tops. And this bottom piece here should set right in there perfectly. Pretty much dead on, boys. Okay, so I already know what I want to change. <laughs> I already know what I want to change, but um, dimensionally, this piece will not change. So what I've done is still gonna to be totally okay. But here's what I'm thinking. Check this out. So what I've done, what I did was make my little piece, obviously, like I said, I'm gonna create pieces that go from here to there, up, 
over and then wherever they meet i'll attach them to the firewall then i'll mark the inside of those pieces pull it all out cut the firewall make all these paper pieces out of metal put it back in and uh weld it weld it sand it then it'll get bonded when the rest of the engine bay gets done but what i'm thinking is i'm going to redesign this piece and i'm going to put holes for some melt-in nut certs and then my inside piece is going to be o-ringed with holes that are countersunk so i can put bolts and basically sandwich these two together um this piece of steel will be cut out for them to sandwich together to each other that way these my inner and outer pieces will seal and also i'm still going to keep it the same as it is for mock-up purposes because i'm going to keep the v-bands because they keep everything sturdy tight and looking good but after i get all this mocked up get the rest of the cold side finished right there um i'm going to reprint this i just stopped the carbon print um because i realized what i was going to change i'm going to replace that v-band and that v-band both of those with hd clamps so hd clamps give you a quarter inch they give you a quarter inch of wiggle room so with this being a firewall grommet and i know the car the car is going to flex a little bit no matter what so if i have uh hd clamps on the inside and the outside here if it flexes like this or whatever the motor wants to move back or if it wants to tilt whatever that's going to give us flex to where it's not putting all the stress on our carbon printed pieces. So that's what I'm thinking. And it's gonna still look freaking awesome and be completely um, obviously functional. So I'm excited. This is, this is what gets my gears rolling. Look at that. It's going to look really, really good. And this whole car is gonna be one of a kind. I'm really excited for it. So I'm going to get back to work.